Right. Good afternoon, and welcome to the September edition of From the Helm with Maureen Max. We have a very special episode today. We are live at the Boston Oiler Factory. You might hear a few noises and stuff going on as we're talking, but that's just part of the scenery and the excitement of being here. We don't, don't get to do this often, so very excited. Earlier today, Kelly and I took a little tour through the factory. It was amazing. I Fantastic. Mean, it's the second time I've been to the factory, and every time I'm just wild by it. I mean, of course, you can see this beautiful Boston Whaler 420 outrage behind us, and uh, it's just a nice day. It's a little toasty out here, of course, but that's, you know, we're in South Florida, so that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, so today we're here with Jeff Vaughn. VP of Sales, Marketing, and Customer Service at Boston Whaler. He's going to talk to us about what's going on at Boston Whaler. But first, if you have any questions or comments you want to put in as we're going along, make sure to do that in the comments section. We'll be keeping an eye out for your questions and we'll ask them. But uh, let's go ahead and get it started with this exciting episode cool. and uh, let's talk to Jeff. Let's go. So, uh, Jeff, do you want to tell us first a little bit about what you do here at Whaler and how long you've been here? Sure. <clears throat> I started here at Whaler uh, 24 years ago this December. Um, as a regional sales manager, and I won't go through the entire history, but today I oversee sales, marketing, and customer service worldwide. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to have this role. I get to work with dealers. I get to work with customers. Um, just an hour ago, I was in a design meeting as we've got some products uh, a year or two down the road, uh, talking about what needs to be in the new product. Um, I oversee our, our service, which is, is very important. Uh, people who buy these boats and, and love these boats need to have service. Marine Max needs our support with yeah. service. So we appreciate it a ton. And we're trying, you know, we're trying to get better at that because uh, because it's very, very important. So that's, that's kind of what I do, a little bit of everything. So tell us kind of, you know, a lot of people know Boston Whaler is the unsinkable legend. Yep. So tell us kind of what that means to you, the unsinkable legend, and, and uh, what's the difference here at Boston Whaler? Well, the unsinkable legend is, is really how we refer to uh, Boston Whaler's reputation over the last 60 years. <clears throat> you know, when, when Whaler started back in 1958, um, it was started by a man named Dick Fisher. He was a scientist, he was a tinkerer, uh, he was very passionate about fishing, passionate about new technology. And he had read a, a new article, or an article in a magazine, Popular Mechanics, about this new material called fiberglass. <laughs> and the previous issue or two, uh, there was an article about this new uh, substance called foam, styrofoam. And he, he began to think, boy, if I could take fiberglass, which apparently lasts forever, and styrofoam, which will make it float, if I could put those together, I could build a boat that would last forever, that would be safe, it wouldn't sink, because sure. back then, most of the boats were made out of wood, yeah. which was wonderful, but they didn't last forever, and they filled with water at times, and they right. would sink. So uh, that's, that's kind of how it got started, and that unsinkable legend uh, started in 1958, 60 years ago, and that process of the foam and the fiberglass, we refer to it as unibond construction, and essentially it's been refined over the years, mm -hmm. but it's essentially unchanged. Yep. Uh, we still take two layers of fiberglass, put foam in the middle, close the mold, stand back, let it create a lot of heat and pressure, and uh, when that occurs, uh, we open up the mold and we have another unsinkable legend to, uh, to take to the marketplace. So, yeah, it's exciting. And, and the thing that's cool, in, in my opinion, you say, what does it mean to you? Yeah. One of the things that I think about on a regular basis is all of those, all of those elements that Dick Fisher was so passionate about and concerned about, we still are today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was a scientist. We have scientists here. Our design team, our engineers, mm -hmm. our manufacturing people, they, a lot of them are trained scientists. And they're very passionate. When you got to walk around earlier, you would have seen people working hard, oh, yeah. very passionate about what they're doing. So when I think about Whaler today, in my mind, it's very similar to what Dick Fisher started 60 years ago. And I know darn well he'd be proud of what we're doing. Well, and it obviously shows that history is very important here at Boston Whaler. You look yes. anywhere, you know, you look on your website, you go to the boat shows. I mean, history is what it's all about at Boston Whaler. And it's exciting to see what you guys have done. It is. It is. And you've got to take that history and bring it into the present day. Innovation. Right? Yeah. You've got to, what's, what's going to be different? And, you know, in my 25 years here with the company, it's the product has evolved as boating needs have evolved. Sure. We were just talking earlier with Amanda that, 
you know, when I started here in 1994, we had two models. We had two models that were over 24 feet. Mm -hmm. Now I have like 20 models that are over 24 feet. So as time has gone on, engines have gotten bigger, so the boats can get mm -hmm. bigger, and people wanted more features, more comfort yep. on their boats, and that's why we're sitting behind a, or in front of a 420 Outrage. So, uh, so speak about, uh, you said the models, I mean, there's a big range when it comes to the size of your models. Can yes. you talk about the model lineup here at Boston Whaler with all your different uh, range here? Sure, so we have, uh, we, we sell a lot of center console boats, mm -hmm. and we have Montauks that are center consoles, Dauntless that are center consoles, Outrages that are center consoles. Well, why are they all different? Simply put, the Outrage is our offshore battle wagon. That's mm -hmm. designed to go offshore, rough weather, take it anywhere, expedition grade. When we think about Dauntless, it's also a very strong boat, built the same way, but a different hull design. It's really for, for bay boats and bay boating and river boating, yep. where you don't need big high sides and a deep V. So it uses less fuel and it's more stable. It's my personal favorite. <laughs> that is, and that's my personal favorite too. I have a 27 Dauntless. They're great boats. And then there's the Montauk, which is really our halo product, if yep. you will. It's the boat that, uh, that the sports series that put us on the map. And there's still many traditionalists that love the Montauk. We just introduced, as you know, yes. a new Montauk a year ago. Yeah. And it's been met with, with huge fanfare. Even, even our, our fans from yesteryear, all the folks who love all the old boats, have given us great accolades for what we've done, which I think is important to the brand. Yeah. And then the sports series, which is really our our skiff series. We're getting right. We just introduced this week a new 13 and 16 yeah. footer. Um, so, if you guys haven't checked out the new 13 foot uh, Super Sport, check it out at BostonWhaler.com and Remax.com. That thing is a new paint scheme I've seen and a yes. lot of new features. Yeah. So. Storage. I we walked by it earlier today. It's really neat. Can you? Go ahead and talk a little bit about through the, the new features. Yeah, so so on the on the sport series, uh, a couple of things that I think are important. One is storage, right? Mm -hmm. It's a small boat. It's 13 yeah. feet. It's a very simple boat. And and simplicity is part of its nature. That's what people want. And yeah. But they need storage. So we were able to put more storage in the boat. We also went back, and if you look closely at the lines of the boat and look at some of our older boats, you can see some of the... Some of the uh, uh, well, what's the word? Some of the uh, elements of the old boats inside the new boat from a design standpoint. They ride beautifully. Nice, soft ride. Um, so we're excited about getting that boat out to the market. Well, and so. I know, I hear a lot of people say that they, they got started in boating on a 13 Sport. Right. You know? Right. Yes. And yes. It's, uh, it's that kind of thing that, you know, it's a it's an entry-level kickoff to the boating industry, and to, to boating. My, uh, my, my nephew, uh, who's 32, 33 years old, um, contacted me a few months ago, or I guess it was last summer, and he says, I just got a new whaler, I just got a new whaler, it's so oh, cool, what is it? He said, it's a 1964-13 sport. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not a new whaler, he said, it is to me. Is and he's excited, and, and he's out in his 13-foot whaler, and you know, that boat's been around for 40 years, that yeah. particular boat, and, and these incredible. boats last pretty much forever. That's, it goes back to what you're saying, yeah, that's where's the purpose of doing the foam and the fiberglass. Exactly. I do. Exactly. I, I have to. I myself have an older 13 Sport, but seeing the new ones, I'm really excited with all the different options and the storage, the lockable storage, which seems silly, but for yep. me, I'm like every time we go somewhere, I'm like, where am I gonna put my keys? Yeah. Sure, sure. My wallet. Yep. So, and the team did a good stuff. job at uh, with that boat, mm -hmm. with a very small footprint, if you will. Yes. Then there's the two other families of boats: the Conquest, which is our cabin series of boat. We have a 28, 31, and 34 Conquest. Uh, very popular boats, and uh, then lastly is the Realm series, which is our latest thinking on what an expedition grade day boat would be. A boat that's perfect to run to the Bahamas on. Uh, it's got a cabin in it, but it's a small cabin because most of the space is the outdoor space where yep. people want to be when they're in the boat. But the cabin's big enough to either sleep a couple of people or win and change and. Uh, take a nap perhaps or something like that. So sure. a wide a wide product offering from 11 to 42 feet Probably one of the biggest in the industry So true. And if you guys have any questions or comments again, we're here with Jeff Vaughn from Boston Whaler So if you have any questions or comments feel free to, to send them in or, or afterwards We'll be sure to get it back to you on those So now that we've been talking about how much the line has grown and all the, the new models and yep. how it's much wider than a lot of the other competitors Let's talk a little bit about the expansion that you've had in the factory. There's yes. a lot going on here. We saw a lot of new things as we were walking through. And you can even hear it, too. It's <laughs> you can. That's what some of the banging and clanging and, frankly, what 
one of the reasons we're sitting where we are is we've literally run out of space. And you saw that when you walked around earlier. Uh, we had 45 acres here that we've had since 1991. And uh, just a year ago, we purchased the land next door, 15 acres. We actually purchased 20 acres. And we worked out a, uh, a deal with the city of Edgewater where we're going to take five acres down by the waterfront and make it a park. So there's another waterfront park for the city of Edgewater. Okay. Um, and we are a good, we, 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 it's important to us that we are part of this community. I mean, we have 800 plus people who work here. Six years ago, there were 300. So we're, we are the second, I think we're the second largest employer in the, in the county here. Wow. Um, and so there's a lot of folks, but we need space. So, so we've added this, uh, this new land, and you saw the machines scraping down the dirt and getting it ready. And you also see numerous buildings going up. So we're going to expand our, our footprint from approximately 300,000 square feet to over 500,000 square feet Jeez. once this is all done. Wow. Um, just to make us more efficient, more effective. Uh, the plant was not designed to put so many large boats through, um, and we've adapted as time's gone on, but this is a big commitment. It's a big commitment by Brunswick. Uh, you know, it's a over $40 million investment in Boston Whaler, but, but they are confident that that investment is going to give them a return, and we're confident that our design team and our manufacturing team is going to take that space, create some more wonderful boats, and uh, get them out to the world. That's incredible. And we definitely have seen some wonderful boats. I mean, just from walking around here. I mean, we're standing in front of and or sitting here and, and just looking around. I mean, it's just some magnificent boats here, and then the facility is just incredible too. So yeah, it's a uh, it, it, it's it, and we're all in one place here at the yeah. moment. So. Um, it's 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 a little confined, but you know it's a, it's a good place to be. We have a good reputation with the with the uh, folks who work here. Um, you know it's important to us that they're safe. It's important to us that they have a good experience with their job, sure. um, and it's a desirable place to work. Even though some of the work is very difficult. I mean, grinding fiberglass yeah. and installing hard work. rub rails and engines uh, isn't easy. Uh, but uh, but the people who are here know that they are part of the unsinkable legend. Part of what I tell them when I address the, the, the workers from time to time, everybody's fingerprints is on every, bo every boat. It's true. Everybody had to row somewhere to get yeah. us where we are today. Um, so whether it's the facility or the people, we're, we're very fortunate to have the ownership that we have and the people have that, that work here. I think this is a, a good segue too. You said where we are today, um, and, and, and we can see, you know, you guys are in a great place here. Um, where are you going? I mean, where, what's the future of Boston Whaler? I mean, we, we kind of see it every day. There's new products coming out. What, where's Boston Whaler going? Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to continue to, on one hand, we're going to continue to refresh the product line that we have. So will we build a bigger boat than our 42 Outrage? Maybe. Um, it's not currently in our plan. We're not going to introduce one next week. Um, we've got to get this place big enough to, so we can go <laughs> build one it. first. Um, but it's really about refreshing the current lineup, you know, making sure that the boats that we come out with um, are what, what today's people want. What they're asking for. And, you know, part of what people want today is, is technology. Technology, we all look at what we're doing. We're doing a Facebook Live yeah. today, right? And, yeah. and when I was in college many years ago, if we would explain <laughs> Facebook Live, none of us would even know what we were talking about. <laughs> so technology has changed our lives. And, and it's the same thing with boats. You know, we've got uh, Nautic on, which is a component that we're uh, we're engineering at the moment, uh, along with one of our sister companies, uh, whereby people will be able to check certain specific status of systems on their boat via their phone. Okay. Um, you know, we have uh, Mercury has Skyhook and, mm -hmm. and Joystick. This technology is there to make it easier to own, easier to operate. Um, so one of the things that I would say as we think to the future, it's how do we take that technology, make it meaningful, right? Not technology for the sake of it, but meaningful yeah. technology, reliable technology that's intuitive. Um, you know, many things that we use today are intuitive. You download an app, boom, you turn it on and you're underway. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we think about boats going back, you know, different systems from different people and the boat builder puts mm -hmm. it together and it's not always intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, so making it easier, making boats more intuitive, uh, they've got to be versatile. So as we think to the future, every time we design a boat, 
How can we make it more versatile so that if I want to go fishing today, we can go fishing. If we want to take our friends out and go cruising Relax. tomorrow, we can do the same thing. Yep. Um, so it's really evolving, um, and, and it's really wrapped around customers changing needs, right? So people who buy these boats um, have different needs and desires today than they did 20 years ago or 10 sure. years ago. And it's up to us to figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. So when we bring a new boat to the market, like the Realm yep. or the Vantage, or the 420 Outrage. Oh, by the way, all of those won Innovation Awards, Correct. right? So they won Innovation Awards because we were thinking about what needs to be on that boat mm -hmm. that's meaningful. So yeah. it's really taking that and dialing it in even more. The, cu the customer experience is important to us, too. I mean, you know, for years, for years, we relied on our dealers mm -hmm. to handle the customer service. And we still do. Mm -hmm. Green Max is outstanding with customer service. You're still the primary go-to. But because of all these systems and complex systems, we need to have better support, and we've done that too. So as we think about the future, sure. how do we make sure that we give our dealers, and therefore our consumers, better service so they have a better experience? That's great. That's very important. And in line with that, another great thing you guys do for customers are events. Yes. So yes. do you want to talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing this summer? You guys have had some great events. Sure, sure. Well, we've uh, we've got a number of events that, that we've done. We've done uh, uh, the Bimini is probably the Bimini event is the one that we've been doing the longest period of time. Uh, we had a couple of hundred people mm -hmm. with over 40 boats uh, go to Bimini this year. And it's great because we bring probably about 30 people from the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably about 30 or so dealer people. Yeah. And then there's probably about 125 customers and their families. And for us to interact with those people and go boating with those people. I mean, we were out fishing. I'm cooking cheeseburgers on the slide-out grill sure. with these customers who said, oh, we've never used the grill. <laughs> we don't really know how to. I, if you have yeah, stuff, I'll, I'll cook it up. So yeah. I cooked up lunch while we were out fishing. Sure. Um, and and, and we, we, we create friendships that, uh, that have lasted a, a long time. Um, so just being with the customers, getting them out to the boats, you know, so for us, it's we're immersed with the customers, so we understand how they're using it, what they need. For the customers, it's great, too, because we're taking them to a place that they may not go by themselves. Exactly. Yeah. But if we're going as a group, Your then we group. go as a group. Okay, we made it to Bimini. They feel comfortable. They're excited. Um, and then they develop friendships, so then they go on their own again. And uh, so that's really been our, our hallmark mark event. Sure. They um, really get to see how tough the boats are when they go over the two, right? Yes, they do. <laughs> I'm yes, pretty sure I've do. seen some Montauks kind of do make, make the crossing to Bimini. Yes. In fact, there's a woman uh, from uh, the Pompano area, Nancy, uh, yeah. who's joined us a number of times in her 17 Dauntless. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my word. But, but, but she was fine. And then we, so we've done. Bimini, that's right? correct. <laughs> yeah, like 60 yeah. miles across the open ocean. Yeah, if so anybody's we, ever done the, uh, the Bimini crossing in a whaler or, uh, you know, have been on an event similar to that, definitely <laughs> let us know, too. And we do them all over the country and, and, frankly, all over the world. I was just in France a month ago uh, where we had a, uh, a customer appreciation uh, event and we had a cocktail party on the beach one evening and the next day we went boating to this uh, to this island and wrapped it up and every all the food, all the French and Italian food that was oh, there man. was amazing. Delicious. So, yeah, it's, it's good. It, it helps us understand how people use their boats and it helps the people who buy these boats know that we're all human beings. I mean, we're Boston Whaler, but we're all people. We're boaters. We're boaters. We're, we're avid boaters, and we want to make it right for them. So that's that's the fun part of the job. That's the fun part of the job. And we're doing even more and more of those. We've done them in New York. We've done them in uh, in uh, uh, west coast of Florida. You do the Abacos as well, right? We do the Abacos as well, yeah. And that's a uh, that's a smaller group, mm -hmm. and we, uh, we bring a smaller group of people with bigger boats because the Abacos is a longer mm -hmm. trip. Um, and that's really to help those people realize that they can go beyond Bimini, right? I mean, if I've been to Bimini a few times, it's great, it's cool, but what's next? It's yeah. all about what's next, right? Yeah. So what's next? The Abacos is next. And bringing 10 or 15 customers with their families, mm -hmm. most of them right back to us to tell us it's the best week I've ever had in my life. So, yeah, it's, it's an important part of it. I mean, people buy boats to spend time with their family and friends. That's that's why they have a boat. Yeah. I know that's why I have a boat. I was on vacation on my 27 Dauntless, 
um, a couple of weeks ago with my family. We spent every day on the boat. We had a blast. That's why I have it. Yeah. So keeping that connection is important to us. I think what's interesting, what we see as well from the Marine Mac side is that we have families who keep coming back to these events year after year and maybe their boat changes to a, you know, an outrage, to a little bit larger outrage, or maybe now they're trying to realm, but they keep coming yep. back and just enjoying these events. That's right. We have a, a, a family from South Carolina, um, the Infingers, who uh, they've been coming to that event for years and two little girls. And those little girls have now graduated from high school and college. And it's yeah. like, oh, my word, I've known them since they were tiny. Yeah, um, so that's, that, yeah, that part of it's fun. It's, it's wonderful. Fun. It's really good. So boat show season is upon us. Um, sure. There's a lot of things going on. Can you tell us a little bit about the upcoming boat show season? You know, what's going to be happening for Whaler? Where are you going to be? What's, what's Well, in about three hours, I'm <laughs> going to be in Tampa uh, to uh, be at the Tampa Boat Show kickoff tomorrow. Um, and I want to thank Marine Max for doing an outstanding job representing our boats at boat shows. It's important. You know, people can shop online all day long, mm -hmm. and they do, as we sure. know. Oh, yeah. Um, but then they want to go touch and feel and see the boat, and then exactly. they want to meet an expert. And the Marine Max team, um, just top professionals. And we're very fortunate to have Marine Max represent us at these boat shows. But we're going to be in Tampa. We're going to be in Newport, Norwalk. Um, Atlantic City was, was last week. Uh, we've got uh, an event in um, uh, Fort Myers coming up in November. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and then, of course, the Lauderdale Boat Show, which is really the biggest one of all. But at Tampa, there's going to be 12 Boston Whalers in the water. So, Including the new uh, 13, I think, right? Including the new 13 and including the new realm, uh, the new realms yes. that are, uh, are exciting. So, so yeah. if you're in the Tampa area, make sure to stop by to see those and to see Jeff, too. And, and of course, that. we're going to be there too. Yeah. We're going to be right. heading over the show tomorrow, and uh, we're going to be checking out all the latest and greatest models from Boston Whaler. So, if you're in the area, stop on by. Sounds great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, yeah. I think we have a, a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, maybe uh, our trusty producer, Sarah, has some questions for us. Absolutely, yeah. So, we have Tracy, Benny, Eugene, Abby, and Jeff all tuning in right now. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Um, where is the Boston Whaler factory actually located? Where are you guys sitting at right now? We are sitting in uh, in Edgewater, Florida, uh, which is in Volusia County. Uh, essentially, we're about 20 miles south of Daytona Beach. Okay. So, if you know Florida, we're in the Daytona Beach area. And how Let's long go. has the factory been here in this area? Uh, it, it, uh, it opened in 1991. Uh, Boston Whaler had numerous factories up in Massachusetts, um, but again, building small boats. Mm -hmm. So they decided they wanted to build this big boat. It was a 22-footer. <laughs> Whoa. Huge. And the ceiling wasn't tall enough, so they needed to buy another building. And long story short, there wasn't anything in the area there. The supply chain was in Florida, mm -hmm. many boat builders in Florida. There was talent in Florida. So they said, you know, let's, let's have a second plant down sure. in, in Florida, and that was 1991. That's, That's awesome. what the basis of this is, and it's been expanding ever since. Yeah. Okay. And then um, we do have another question coming in. Do any of the Boston Whalers have sea keepers on them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. And if you haven't experienced the sea keeper, you need to do that. It's a it's a gyro uh, essentially that gets put into a boat to stop the boat from moving to side to side. And uh, it's available in this boat, and it's probably in this boat. This yeah. forty two outrage. Uh, we're seeing it in boats 35 feet and above, and, and people love the Sea Keeper. It so, is yes. incredible. I mean, if you haven't experienced the Sea Keeper, it's, uh, you're going from that to that pretty much. I yes. mean, it's, it's pretty revolutionary. People love it. We've actually had people um, buy the same boat that they've had that's only a year or two old and just add a Sea Keeper. To get the Sea Keeper. To yeah. get the Sea Keeper. So, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, good question. And if you want to see the difference, um, if you go online to Marine Max YouTube, sure. You can find some videos that show Boston Whaler actually a boat uh, with the Sea Keeper or one with it out, got it on and yep. we're rocking and then they turn it on and it's just smooth and easy. Yep. So you can, even if you can't get on it, you can at least see what it looks like. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, so we are here again uh, talking to Jeff Vaughn from Boston Whaler and it's been uh, quite the day. We've been excited to walk around the facility, see everybody at work, hard at work and uh, just see all these beautiful boats being made. It's. And if you as a customer haven't seen something like this, I'm sure, uh, is, it, is there a way that customers could experience it? Yes, we've, um, at the moment, we've put our factory tours on hold. Okay. Um, for for obvious reasons. reasons. You might not see it here, but we are literally out of space. Yep. 
Um, but I would imagine that uh, by springtime, March, April time, we ought to be able to reopen that back up again. Um, and we, we generally do them uh, once or twice a week. If you go to our website, you sign up for it, sure. and then we reach out, confirm the appointment, and we do a nice tour of the facility. Um, anybody who's interested in purchasing a new Boston whaler but would really like to see the factory uh, or see what a boat looks like before it's put together, just get with your Marine Max salesperson and, and we do private tours for them on a regular basis. There's almost always someone here with a customer, but we've, uh, and we're proud of what we have here. We want people to see what goes on here because Definitely. this is a special it's place. Very special and very unique and very interesting procedures and processes yeah. happening. And of and course, the team the, members are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> we met a lot of people today and everybody was great. We actually saw how they put the decal on the side, which it's, it's something you don't really think about, but I mean, it needs to be straight, right? Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> I trust it, it was when you saw it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you did a bang up job. For <laughs> yeah, sure. we got to see a lot of different things, and we have several videos that will be coming out over the next week on YouTube and Facebook mm -hmm. that show some of those different processes and give you a chance to meet the team members who are doing them and hear from them about what it's like and what it's like to be working at Whaler as well. And of course, check out your local Marine Max store to see all the latest models from Boston Whaler, um, or to contact your local Marine Max for more information on that. And of course, what we're on right now, social media. Yeah. Um, where can they find you on social media for Boston Whaler? They can find us on Boston Whaler Global Inc. Boston yeah. Whaler Global Inc. on Facebook. On Facebook, yes. Um, yep. Instagram as well, look for Boston Whaler. Yep. So, uh, and also bostonwhaler.com. Don't make sure, go check out everything. I mean, the 130 and the 160 are up there right in front of you when you get to the home page so yep. you can check those out and get all the details see all the new pictures yep. and we love the interaction we love the interaction we have questions come in on a regular basis uh, we have people call or, or, or post that they they love their boat they have people post that they're not happy <laughs> and that can happen like to hear from everybody. But we want to know that because mm -hmm. we want to get it squared away so yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a great tool that is fantastic and of course, uh, watch for the From the Helm to come in October. Yes. And, and in November, we'll be back with Whalers Tom as well for uh, the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, too. Yeah, it's going to be a very special episode. And of course, uh, you can find us on Instagram at Marine Max Online, our YouTube channel as well. Find us at Marine Max. Um, Boston Whaler, I believe, has a, a great YouTube channel as well. Yes. And uh, that's pretty much it, it for today. We've had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for coming over. Thanks for coming over. Next time you're here, the housekeeping will be a little <laughs> bit nicer. Uh, we'll have another 300,000 square feet of manufacturing available. But sure. uh, thanks for coming by. We really appreciate it. Thanks again, Thank Jeff. You. And uh, tune in next month. We'll be, uh, we'll be back from the helm with Marine Max. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Well, mm -hmm. it could be worse, right? Sitting in front of a 420 yeah. Outrage. Yeah. And I'm excited. I'm actually excited to get over to the show. Yeah.